Let's take a look how we can make an environment render in Blender. So character with an environment as a little, you know, bringing it all together in this little mini series about working with Blender. This is the picture we're gonna make or something very similar to that. This is an exterior set from a game rip, I believe from a user called Uber Machine. Ever so slightly illegal to download this asset, but my supporter Nick wanted to use it, so no problem. Same with the character that all comes from the same creator. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up, how to import a post character from a different Blender project into this. I'll show you how to make these little adjustments here that we accentuate some things that come out. I'll show you how to work with HDRIs. That's mainly what we see here in the background. And that also gives the scene a bit of a base lighting character, uh, accentuating lights here, and how to get the depth of field effect in here. This is a cycles render, and I'll show you what this looks like and how to set this up in Blender and I'll go nice and easy. It's a bit like a live stream. So if you want to follow along, you can grab the assets from this link here that I'll put into the description. This is from Open3D Lab and the user's Uber machine. And I'm using this one here, the Resident Evil exterior pack. Let's get started. I'm using Blender 4.3.2 for this at the time of recording. And I'm gonna go and start by going to open the project because it comes as a Blender project already. I have it in my downloads directory here. I think this is it, RPD exterior pack, that's it. And we're gonna pick the front entrance here. Now, before I go and open it, I'm gonna go to this little gear icon here and switch off load UI. And that assures that I will see my UI rather than the user who saved its UI, because that sort of freaks me out every once in a while. And I'll show you how to deal with a set like this. So it comes very nicely organized. It comes with lights. It comes with all the props separated. So that's quite nice. And given that I now see my UI, I can see this in its full glory here. If I go and click this next button here along the viewport shading, I'm gonna have to wait a second for all these shaders to get compiled. And then we'll see a bit of a non-shaded preview. So that means we see the textures on these objects, but it takes Blender a second to compile them all. During which time, of course, it'll be completely unresponsive and there's no progress bar of any kind, but that's Blender for us. There we go. Now we can see everything with textures. So sometimes, just on that note, sometimes you see a message at the top left here that tells you it's compiling shaders and how many it has to go. On the Blender 4.3, I've seen that message no longer presents itself. I don't really know why, but on previous versions, I've seen that and that's quite helpful, but you know, one of those things. When I look for camera positions on a fairly large-ish sort of set like this, it's a little cumbersome to just use the regular viewport control. So what I like using is the walk or fly navigation. That gets me a bit of a better overview of the scene and I can just explore it a little bit better. You can find that here under view and then there's navigation at the very bottom of it. You have fly and walk animation. They're almost similar. Fly is a bit of a drone, so there's a bit of a lag to it. And walk navigation, that's the one that I'm gonna use. So as you move your mouse, you look through the viewport and then WASD will move you forward. Q will go down, E will go up. And if you scroll the mouse wheel, it makes the movement faster. So that way I can literally go and have a look around what this looks like from a camera perspective. And I can explore where I want my camera to be. So all this is basically window dressing on the outside here. So we probably don't wanna put any action here, but this where the car pileup is, we can probably put something in here and we'll see, whoops. Then we see the raccoon police department in the background here. That's, that's sort of nice. Now I've got something else here. Oh yeah, once you've found a position that you like, just click, left click, and then that locks your viewport in at that point. Now I've just discovered something else. If I scroll back, I look like it looks like I'm hitting into these walls here and that can happen if you shoot in a set of this size. So one way to get out of it is to go back to your viewport navigation here. I've got that on my quick menu that goes and you know can, that means you can you can access it very quickly from anywhere in this mode. You do that by right clicking on the menu item in question. So if you head over to view and then navigation, you can right click on here and then you can add it to your quick favorite. So mine says remove now because it's already on there, but that's a fast way to get there at all times. Another thing is that we can adjust the focal length of our preview camera. That's by pressing N on the side menu here and under view, we can see the focal length of this current preview camera is 50 millimeters. 
So let's set that to something lower, like 38, or just left click and drag to get a good viewing angle there. If you make it too wide, then you see all these crazy distortions here, but it'll also show you where the camera actually is and why you'd be bumping into walls as you walk around. So I'm probably gonna be shooting with it's sort of 28 mil lens. And that means if I go back to my quick menu here and say walk animation, then I can probably show it better because I can show some more cars in here. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'd like something more wide angle like this. I'll see, final thing to be determined. Next thing we need is of course a camera. So let's go and create ourselves one with shift A and then we'll go down here to camera. And I've got one here and I'm gonna go and select it, press F2 and call this one main cam. And in order to put whatever I'm seeing through the viewport with this camera, I can go and select Control, Alt and Zero on the numpad, and then this will happen. Now, this is gonna show me something slightly different now. It's gonna show me the camera, in fact, but the camera's focal length doesn't match what our preview camera was seeing. So we're currently using 28 millimeter here in the preview, but if you go over with your camera selected on the little camera icon here, if my face isn't in the way, I can see that we're basically shooting this with a 50 mil lens and that's really not what we want. So let's set that so that it aligns with 28. And now we see everything on the outside of the passpart two, pretty much like what we saw in the viewport. And we also see this orange rectangle that shows us what's actually gonna end up on the camera. Not quite the same framing, but we're gonna go and adjust that in a second. So first of all, the aspect ratio, that is governed by the actual render size. So if we go to the output tab here, we can see the resolution has been set by the project. So the project came with all these settings and that shows me something like a two by one aspect ratio. I think I might go and put that to 1920 by 1080 and then we have a 16 by nine aspect ratio. As I scroll my mouse wheel now, if I go and scroll or move through the scene, you can see that this is the camera. It's looking at that. And as we've learned in the previous episode, zero on the numpad makes me look through that again. So no matter what I do here, zero on the numpad will make me look through the camera. If I wanted to adjust the camera, I'll go on the view tab here. I'll go and select camera to view. And now as I make adjustments, like for example, control middle mouse button to move my camera, I can now go and see that the camera itself is actually showing me a different position. And this is sort of what I want. I think this is a good size framing here. So I'll disable that. And that means my camera itself has now adjusted what we see on it. So this is sort of, this is sort of good. Let's just have a quick preview what happens when we go and switch this over to the third option. In fact, before I do that, let me go and save my scene. Very important. I'll call this one demo v2 just so that we have that scene saved. 